Imagine if you could turn your life around in a matter of days. Imagine if you could lower your cholesterol 50 points in a matter of days. Well, you don't have to imagine. Today's featured expert, Rachel Brown, who's the author of For Fork's Sake book, is going to share with us what she did to turn her health around, her family's health around, and to really make a mark on what she's doing in the plant-based world. Rachel Brown earned her plant-based nutrition certification from the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies and E. Cornell University. After being diagnosed with high cholesterol in her late 20s, she discovered the China study and started exploring the science of nutrition. After she ate a whole food plant-based no oil diet for just 17 days, her cholesterol dropped 50 points. That was the beginning of her family's journey from the standard American diet the sad diet to a whole food plant-based, no oil diet. She calls it the happy diet. Stick around. You're in for quite a treat. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? Then you're, you're in the right place at the right time. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, certified plant-based nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Well, Rachel, I have to tell you, first of all, you're one of the most organized experts I've ever had on my show. Um, I want to compliment you on that. And two, Thank your you. journey is very similar to mine, other than I don't have any kids, but the whole thing of really transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle. And I love, love, love the title of your book for fork's sake, because you <laughs> want to say, you know, for fork's sake, you're actually doing that. So let's start yep. with, give us a little bit of your background, how you actually came to discover a plant-based lifestyle. And you're actually of the protocol, the no SOS, which more and more people are subscribing to that, myself included. So uh, tell yep. us a bit about how you got involved in the whole plant-based lifestyle. Sure, sure. Well, I grew up with a dad who was always on cholesterol medication, and he would have some odd side effect like lose his taste, and he'd have to change medication. And, you know, this was just a normal thing growing up. And so in my 20s, when I was diagnosed with high cholesterol, I was like, no, thank you. I don't want to go on medication. Um, tell me what else I can do. And at that time, they would say, well, exercise some more, cut out, you know, eggs and cheese. Um, and so I would do that for a time and then my cholesterol would creep back up. So um, then my late twenties, my nephew was diagnosed at age five with cancer and his mom was in nursing school at the time. And she had a professor who said, have you looked at the role of nutrition in cancer? And um, they had a small hobby farm. They grew all their own meat. They had an amazing veggie garden as well. But she taught me how to pull mozzarella cheese. You know, they were doing the whole thing. And um, overnight, she started reading these books and they went vegan. And she said, you've got to read these. And so I started with the China study and uh, started reading and watching documentaries. And initially, honestly, I was really angry because I was so confused as to why Nobody had told me this information before. So um, that really was our entryway into changing our diet. Once I found out this information and really how simple it was, not easy at first, but simple, uh, it didn't take a whole lot to make the change. Right. So yeah, that was our kind of entry into it. Well, and I love how you, you made the distinction of it's very simple, not always easy. And uh, the not easy comes from the fact that food manufacturers have gotten us hooked on food. Um, you mentioned T. Colin Campbell's book, The China Study, which is probably one of the most well-researched books mm -hmm. on a on the blue zones and a plant-based diet. And, um, yep. and, you know, the man is phenomenal. He's in his yes. late 80s, I believe. And yes. he's just like the ever-ready bunny, you know, just goes and goes Incredible. and goes. But yeah, one thing I read in your book, I did read about your nephew at the age of five was diagnosed with cancer and how progressive and forward thinking the doctor who said, have you thought about nutrition as it relates to health? And yeah. very few doctors do that because they don't get the training. But your your son, I believe it was at the mm -hmm. age of 10 had high cholesterol. Yes. And so this was a surprise for us because we'd been eating vegan, I would say at that point for two years, mm -hmm. and he still had high cholesterol. And this led us down the road to um, my, I should say my dad's dad also had Alzheimer's. He died of pancreatic cancer. 
Uh, my uncle died of pancreatic cancer. So there were a lot of things health-wise going on aren't in our family. And um, that led us to do some genetic testing. We figured out our APOE genes, um, which we have the four, three. Those are, um, everybody has one of six types of the APOE gene. And so that's um, now the research coming out on how these genetic factors uh, play into your risk of Alzheimer's, amyloid plaques in your brain, that kind of stuff. Um, we're not in the highest risk, but we're one step down from that. So when we found out my son had high cholesterol um, at age 10, and there was no way we wanted to put him on medication at that time, that's when we went back and went, okay, let's get a little more strict. Let's cut out the high fat foods and high fat plant foods and see if we can change things with that. And so, yeah, I tell the story about him. I, I mean, in nine weeks, he lost 10% of his body weight and he was never hungry. It was just making a few swaps that we changed out. Um, and yeah, he has, his cholesterol went back to normal and he's now an 18 year old freshman in college eating plant-based on his own, not because That's incredible. it's something we do at home. <laughs> I, I love that. And, and um, I want to remind people about your book, the for fork's sake, because um, I have to say it's a very well researched book, and yet it's very easy to read. Um, a nice combination because you have a lot of facts and figures in there, and you also have a ten day plan where people can transition. and We'll we'll talk about that in a moment, but um, I want to let people know that you actually donate fifty percent of your profits from the book sales to a nonprofit to a charity. Where do you donate the money? You know, I am still in the vetting process of where exactly it's going to go. But I, I, yes, I decided early on that 50% of the profits were going to be donated to charity. And I'm a member of 1% for the planet. Um, so 1% of gross sales is also going to 1% for the planet. This was really my effort at trying to give back and help others in this whole crazy messed up food system that we're in. Um, I just wanted to spread the word as much as I could. So this was my effort. You know, like you mentioned, T. Colin Campbell, speaking with him, he endorsed the book. He was he's such a wonderful man. Um, but, you know, and John McDougall as well. Um, working with some of these guys, they've dedicated their entire lives to helping people. And, you know, I felt like it was the least I could do because as a beneficiary of that, I wanted to pass it on to Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and T. Colin Campbell, he's just an amazing, amazing human being that yes. he gives and gives and gives and he gets so much in return, which is health, vitality. He gets to impact uh, people like you are doing with your book. And I, I'm curious when you talk about veganism, because this is where a lot of people have confusion. They assume that a plant-based diet is vegan, which it doesn't have to be. Somebody can be right. eating plant-based, but they can still eat meat. So it's an exclusive plant-based diet would right. make it vegan. But then right. there are vegans who don't eat healthy. You know, th there's a really, really um, uh, big misunderstanding by a lot of people. Oh, if I'm vegan, then I'm eating healthy. Well, you can eat Oreos, you can eat potato right. chips, you can eat a lot of garbage food. So talk to us about uh, what people will find in your book as far as the di the distinctions between veganism and being a vegan who is also whole food, plant-based, no oil. I mean, we have right. a lot of initials like the LGBT <laughs> yes. community. It's like, exactly. let's add a few more, uh, you know, and I'm in that community. Right. So I, you know, right. I, I, I can say it with a lot of respect, but quite seriously, yeah. it's like we have so many initials. What does it all yes. mean? And, and how, how will people know what's best for them? Right, right. Yeah, I kind of delve into that because a lot of people ask and are confused by the titles kind of out there. Um, we eat whole food, plant based, no oil. And that acronym, woof, padabano, you know, you can't really, it doesn't roll off the tongue. So um, I, I change it to happy. So we go from sad, the standard American diet, to happy, which is healthy and plant powered. Yay. <laughs> so that was my attempt at making it a little bit easier. But yeah, you know, a lot of people, they picture vegan, you say that word and something, a picture comes into their mind that is like a, a, a hippie who drives a Vita bus and, you know, wears patchouli. That's kind of what comes to mind for a lot of people. And, and that's okay. You know, that's a, that's a lifestyle thing. That's more mm. on the um, maybe political side of things, even as opposed to what you're eating for health reasons. So um, it, it can be both, like you said, but it's not necessarily the same thing. So um, yeah, we, I, I talk about not eating things with a mother or a face uh, as one way to differentiate, you know, what we eat. Um, and then, and 
trying to remind people that we're just trying to eat as many whole foods, unprocessed foods. And I talk about this in the book. I, Juliana Heaver did some work and she's been a nutritionist with people for over 25 years. And she's noticing the trend that she now has people who are vegan, who have the same diseases that she used mm -hmm. to see 25 years ago in standard American diet eating. So that's where um, I think we need to have com more conversation about, it's not just that it's vegan, that it's lacking animal products, but it's actually what is in the products that you're eating. If it's a bunch of processed junk food, you know, like you said, Oreos, potato chips, French fries, you're not getting the health benefits. Uh, maybe you're saving animals, but you're not getting the health benefits right. in the long run that, um, that we were initially looking for. And you know, not that we don't love animals. We love animals. We, we don't agree with killing animals. Um, but we really started this journey for our health right. and have then over time learned so much about the horrors of animal agriculture and the effects on the planet and um, on our world that it makes a lot of sense for the earth side as well. Absolutely. And and when I started a little over four years ago, I started for health reasons. I was 64 at the time, had inflammation, and I started doing some research. And I realized that if I got rid of meat and dairy, any animal-based products, the inflammation would go away. And I thought, okay, I'll try it for seven days. And I was a little bit pudgy at the time. And I thought, I'm going to give it seven days. Well, within two days, the inflammation was gone. Within seven days, I dropped like five pounds without dieting because I thought I'd give up on diets. I've tried yes. everything. So I thought, okay, I'll give it another seven days. Still not connecting the dots with the fact that I rescue animals and yet I was eating animals. And after about 30 days, the changes were phenomenal. And then it was six months into it. I was actually at the grocery store and I see you're a spiritual director, which we're going to talk about that. And you'll appreciate this spiritual experience I had. I'm at the grocery store walking by the meat department and I literally stopped in my tracks and I, I felt the pain and suffering. I felt that, mm. you know, I, I could hear the anguish of the animals. And it, it was like, even as I share that, I get the God bumps of like, oh my gosh, you, you were so disconnected. And it's amazing how disconnected in the world we are and so much of that has to do with our diet. And one of the things that I, I learned about you is you're a Pilates instructor, a yoga instructor, you're a spiritual director. What does a spiritual director mean? And what does the spiritual director do? Hmm. Yeah, you know, there are a lot of different ties with um, the spiritual director stuff. But I would say um, helping people discover why they're here. And, um, and seeking higher power as they see that, but understanding that we're here for more than just ourselves and what we can grab onto. And um, I, I think we all are designed with a hole in us that until we are, um, we learn about that, we fill it with all kinds of things. Hmm. So um, helping people journey along that path and just walking with people who are wanting something more. You know, most people I work with are, are just dissatisfied in life in some way. They might have everything that they ever wanted, but they're they're still lacking something. Right. So discovering um, walking journey with people and helping them discover what that is. And and I think like you said, it can come up in lots of different places. And I think this um, you know, eating is such a huge part of life and uh, it's something we all have to do. And it can be it can have so many ties to the whole person. And so I love the interconnectedness between spirituality, really, and eating everything, Absolutely. everything we do. Absolutely. Well, this morning, I, I go on a morning run almost every single day. Lately, we've had fires in Oregon. So yeah. the air quality hasn't been the greatest. So a few days I've had to not not go outside. But as I was finishing up my run today, I was thinking about all the fast food restaurants that are in the world and how quickly people consume their food without even thinking about what they're putting in their body. And one of the things that I've noticed uh, since identifying fully as a vegan and a plant-based eater is that when I prepare my foods, because they're live foods, because they're whole foods, I, I'm much more aware and conscious about what I'm putting into my body. And it's much more of a spiritual practice. Um, how do you, what's your take on that? Yeah, definitely. I think some of those small things, like you said, it doesn't have to be a huge shift. You don't even have to do anything really big, but slowing down before you eat just to acknowledge like, 
I'm so grateful that I have this food, you know, the intention that you're preparing food with also just a lot of it is just slowing down and being mindful about what we're doing, you know, thinking about somebody somewhere grew this food, if it didn't come out of your own garden, you know, there were there were actually people, hopefully not just machinery, um, growing the food that you were eating. So just taking a moment to be thankful for all that we have and um, our ability to get this food. And then, you know, once you start to become aware of these things, like you said, you kind of shift into more of um, once you experience it, you want others to experience it as well. So then that leads into more advocacy for wanting people who are working in the fields to have safe environments to work in, healthy environments, you know, wanting there not to be pesticides on the food that we eat. So it opens up this whole other maybe realm or this other part of the world that you maybe didn't spend much time thinking about, but it can start with just that slow, just beginning to, as you said, fix your meal or before you eat your meal, taking a moment to be grateful and mindful about what's going on. Um, could you lead, could lead you to big steps in other parts of your life too. Absolutely. And I want to remind people that you're listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health Show. I'm your host, Kathleen Gage. And I'm talking with Rachel Brown, uh, who is the author of For Fork's Sake. I love that, (laughs) For Fork's Sake. And, um, you know, one of the things that a lot of people don't consider when they think of factory farms, they think of the evil people working there. Well, these people are as abused as the animals in many Mm -hmm. cases. Oftentimes they're illegal immigrants. The only work they can get is working in an environment like that. There's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of alcoholism, Mm -hmm. drug addiction, and all of that goes into our food. And, And it's really interesting when we start thinking about where does our food come from and what energy goes into our food and you know something as simple as praying before you eat Mm -hmm. and whatever whatever religion or spiritual belief you have but the the act of praying can really change the energy of the food and i know with with your book and with what you do and how clients work with you which by the way how do people reach you what's the best uh way that they can find you yeah, so my website would be the best way, probably. It's www.forforksakebook.com. And I have a consulting link on there. Um, my email is on there. So yeah, forforksakebook.com. I'm also on Instagram, for Forksake Book and Facebook. So people can reach me that way. But yes, I am. Um, I love working with people who are feeling maybe stuck in starting out this journey or right. um, confused about all the information out there, where exactly to start, you know, how, how to just simplify it for people. Um, I, I yeah. love that because you actually have a, den, a, a 10 day protocol where yeah. you, you ease people into it. And the amazing thing about going plant-based, especially if somebody's feeling really sluggish, they're overweight, they're tired, tired, they're uh, depressed because food can depress. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and it's not just what it does to our physical body, but it's the emotional and the, uh, the spiritual, mm-hmm. but your 10 day protocol in your book, um, tell us more about that. Yeah, you know, I set out because I I really wrote the book that I wish we would have had 12 years ago. You know, there are a lot of wonderful books out there, heavy into research, like the China study, those kind of books that a lot of people, when I talk with them, their hindrance in starting this was like, I don't have time to read all those books. Mm -hmm. Then there were a lot of cookbooks, but there wasn't a lot in between. So I wanted to give people something they could grab onto. And like you said, 10 days is not that long, but you can have amazing effects in 10 days. And I, you know, I have to give the disclaimer at the beginning of the book, because if you're on high blood pressure medication, if you're taking insulin, these things can change in just a number of days. So you might need to lower your medication or be off your medication at the end of 10 days even. So um, I had the fantastic experience of doing this at the beginning, getting my blood drawn, changing the way I was eating. I couldn't get back in at 10 days, but I got in at 17 days and my cholesterol had dropped 50 points in that amount of time. And my doctor at the time said, what did you do? Whatever it is, keep doing it because I couldn't do that with medication. So, um, I wanted to set out to give people that simple 10 day process so that they could learn how to give it a go and see for themselves. Because I think that's, you know, you can have all the head knowledge in the world, Mm -hmm. but until you feel different, um, you might not, 
might not be up for making a solid change. But yeah, you know, the book is um, a really quick and easy, simple read. And it was designed to be that way for people who, you know, a lot of young parents said, I just read blogs, I don't have time to read a book. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wanted to give people the why in the beginning, like, why is this important for our health? Why is this important for the planet? And then the 10 day is the how, how do you put this into place? So going through setting yourself up for success, you know, what that looks like in your home for cleaning out things you don't want to eat because it's really hard to eat things that you don't have. Um, so doing a, you know, a few simple clean out tricks, uh, how to transition with food, um, especially for other family members. Maybe if you have kids at home who are not very excited about, you know, not eating chicken nuggets or mac and cheese or whatever, what do you do? So tips around that. And then, um, how, you know, if you have to go to a work event and eat at a restaurant, how do you do that? So, um, just, just really practical, simple tips for people to, to give it a go and really experience it for themselves. Well, okay, here's a a scenario that a lot of people are dealing with, and they've found the holy grail of eating plant based eating Mm -hmm. whole food, Uh, no oil, no salt, no sugar, no sugar. And um, I actually am uh, working right now with the National Health Association, which is they've been around since 1948. And they are plant exclusive is what they promote, Mm -hmm. no SOS, and more and more people are discovering this. But you have one family member that says, okay, I'm making the change. I'm going to eat healthy. You have another family member that's not. It's kind of like somebody going into recovery. And I'm 39 yeah. years sober. So I know what it's like to you yeah. cut all that out. And if you have people that are not supporting you in that, it can be very difficult. So yeah. how do you advise your clients and how do you advise just people in general that really are committed to this, but it's an uphill climb and they're getting pushed back at home? What's your recommendation? Mm-hmm. You know, first of all, I have to say congratulations to those people because it is hard work. And um, thankfully, everybody in my family, I was I was the cook and the shopper. So they, you know, had to eat what I prepared. So yeah. um, my husband still got a steak burrito every once in a while. And it mm-hmm. wasn't until he hadn't experienced mountain biking and really felt better, actually, when he couldn't get a steak burrito that it kind of clicked for him. But, um, you know, I know for a lot of people, it's not the case that, you know, they do have other people who are wanting to eat differently. I think that... Um, a few things, you know, preparing what you know you need for yourself. And um, you can ask other people to prepare their own food. Um, Some people are gracious and continue cooking meat and, you know, food for their spouse or whoever. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And that's great. It's really, you have to look at yourself and go, okay, what works for me? You know, it's the same as making a transition. Some people are really great at black and white changes. You know, they change all of a sudden, that's it. Um, other people like to add something, you know, once a week and, and ease into it. So the same kind of thing, it, it, you can draw boundaries like, you know what, these are my cupboards. These are going to be, you know, only plant-based foods in here. This is my space, you know, in the kitchen, if that helps for people. So they're not tempted by other foods that are maybe around their house. I have um, one woman that talked about, she's still prepared meat for her husband, but she just stopped making it um, really, I I would say palatable. I mean, she just would boil the meat in water and say, here you go. (laughs) And uh, you want it there. You have it. Exactly. And meanwhile, she had this, you know, lovely plant-based lasagna and all this other stuff. And so, um, you can all, also just prepare really wonderful plant-based meals Mm -hmm. and probably people will be open to trying them. A lot of times we prepare food for family members and they don't even know, you know, they, a lasagna, for instance, that has mushrooms and chewy stuff in it that tastes like meat, but there's no animal products in it. Right. So, um, you, you can do it that way as well. So lots of different tactics. I, I like that because I've actually cooked when we've had company come over and uh, I people are shocked and amazed at how tasty things are. So um, I, I'm curious, what about when people go out to eat? What are some of your, your recommendations that they're going to a restaurant? Because I've heard people have horrendous experiences. And personally, me, I've had great experiences. I actually mm-hmm. go talk to the chef. I'll talk to the uh, the server and say, you know, I if I need to, I can say I have a heart condition. They don't need to know right. that my heart condition is it breaks my heart that we're killing right. animals. You know, that that's yeah. my heart yeah. condition. But sure. I'm, I'm at very high risk for colon cancer, or I used to be. Um, I, yeah. I was precancerous. Um, mm-hmm. I'm at high risk for breast cancer, heart disease, all of those diseases that we all believed were hereditary. And it's really what's on the end of our fork. So when somebody yeah. goes out to eat, um, what are some 
just easy to implement strategies for getting mm-hmm. what they need and, and having people respect that. Yeah. You know, Christopher Carnrick, he is wonderful. He was um, a chef. He did uh, t- taught cooking classes in Spain and he transitioned to eating this way. And he has a little um, card that he prints out. So when he goes into a restaurant, he hands it to the chef and it says on there that he has um, heart disease and he needs to eat, you know, these ways. Wow. And I thought that's a wonderful idea. I've never done it myself, but, um, and, and he said the same thing. He's, he's reversed his heart disease, but it's, we're all right on the brink of heart disease if we're eating the standard American diet. So, um, so that's one thing I haven't actually done, but I recommend if people are, you know, want to do that, that's a great way to just take the load off. You don't even have to have a huge conversation. You could just pass this card onto the chef. Um, you know, for us, it's, it's usually not difficult these days, 12 years ago is a little different, but Mm -hmm. these days you can usually find something, even if it's a vegetarian option that you ask to leave the cheese off of, you can usually find something. Um, Especially if you're eating at an ethnic restaurant, they are usually a lot more options. But if you're not, if you're at a steakhouse, you usually can order a baked potato and some sides. So that's like some sides of whatever steamed vegetable they have. You know, you can add that onto your baked potato. You can add, um, you can have a salad or just a grain and you can add those steamed veggies on. So um, as long as you're flexible and I just think of eating out, you know, it's not going to be 100% compliant, probably, because a lot of times it's hard for people to understand that they can't, they can cook without oil in restaurants. Um, So even if we ask, there's often oil. And, and at that point, I just accept, you know, we're doing the best that we can. And it's not the one meal out at a restaurant that's going to kill you. It's all the other meals that you're eating. So we don't eat out a ton. But when we do, we make the best choices we can. So um, yeah, oil is probably the hardest thing you usually can find plant-based options to eat. It's just keeping the oil out of the food that's harder when you eat out at restaurants. You know, and and I hear that from a lot of people. And for me, I am a very black and white person, especially Mm -hmm. because I have just an addictive personality. So when I made the decision, it was like overnight. I, I yeah. was going to try it again for seven days. And that was over four years ago. And uh, in that time, I did identify as a vegan and continue to plant based eater. And it, it's interesting, because we can start fooling ourselves where when I said, Okay, I'm vegan. Well, then I found myself starting to do a little of the uh, garbage vegan food. And it's like, right. okay, you have to get really honest with yourself, because right. it is about the quality of life. And Rachel, yeah. in closing, um, what are your final thoughts for people? And what can you leave people with that will really inspire and encourage them to at least give this a try? Yeah, you know, like you were saying, knowing yourself, I would say everybody can make some step today uh, in in moving this direction. And even, you know, I have a lot of people who come who are really skeptical. They're like, you know, my friend told me about this, or my mom did this, or my brother, or whoever. Um, <clears throat> and they're not really ready to make the full jump. So I would say there are a lot of small steps that you can take, whether that's just adding some greens to one meal a day, or adding greens to every meal a day. Um, start with something attainable that you can do that you'll start to notice the benefits. For people like yourself and myself who are black and white, who are like ready to go, then I would say dive in and give yourself that 10 days in, you know, our taste buds change every two weeks, literally they change. So within two weeks, your body is literally changing from the inside out. So if you are able to give yourself 10 days, you will be amazed at the energy you feel, how your digestive system is working. If you have extra weight, your body is just going to shed that. And you don't have to ever be hungry or on a diet or any of that. You don't have to be working out hours a day. Um, so I would just encourage people to give it a go wherever, you know, knowing yourself, uh, whether that's a black and white start for 10 days, or if it's like, you know, I'm going to add in fruit every meal this week, um, picking some attainable goal and giving it a go. Wonderful. And I I recall, I did say we were going to talk about being a spiritual director. Tell me more about that. What exactly is a spiritual director? (laughs) So um, it's somebody who will walk alongside people who are looking for direction in their life, um, who usually come to a place where um, I would say maybe religion isn't cutting it. I, I like to differentiate between um, connecting with a higher power and having an encounter with a, a living higher power, however you, you know, understand that, but to me, a living God. So how do you, how do you live in a way that 
you can commune and um, live out of a place for others. It's, it's not for yourself anymore. It's, it's for others. It's mm. kind of what you learn as you're going through this journey. So um, I work with an organization called Theodicy, um, theodicy.org, if people want to check it out. But it really is for people who are seeking something more. They know there's something more out there. Um, they're, they're drawn to something more, and they're looking for h- how to find that. So, um, yeah, in my case, spiritual directors, we do, you know, small group meetings, one-on-one, um, there's resources on that website, but Wonderful. it really is finding others to journey with. Excellent. And we'll be sure to put that in the show notes. And I have to say, Rachel, this has been delightful. I love what you're doing. I love your book and I encourage everybody pick up a copy and really dig into it because it will change your life. And if you're looking for a life that is worth living, then you want to consider going whole food, plant-based, no SOS. And Rachel Brown, this has been delightful. And I want to remind people you have been listening to the Plant-Based Eating for Health show. This is Kathleen Gage, and I wish you a lot of health, a lot of abundance, and a lot of commitment to a life well-lived. Have a great day. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices. The kind of choices that are kind to your body, the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.